this is Kimberly Miller from Huglonger Digital Designs, aka the Embrilliance Nerd. And today we're going to play a little bit with drawing with points. And we're going to talk about how to draw with points and the different ways and techniques that will help you get the shapes you're looking to get. I have this real cute little ladybug graphic art that I got from Art Hub, I believe, quite a while back in a set. And let's use this and start digitizing. I'm not going to worry about layering which I'd do first and which I'd do second yet because I like to just start digitizing and then I can arrange things in the proper order. As you can see, you're going to want the wings behind the head, you're going to want the body behind the wings and the head, but let's just start with the head. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to grab my drawing with points tools, click on it, and then I am just going to click top, side, bottom, side, and then I'm going to go up and click right on this little circle with a line through it, and that's going to close my object. And then I'm going to hit return. Now I have a circle and I could do some adjusting to it. So how we're going to adjust this is we're going to, for example, click right on this one, and I'm going to just pull this out a little bit. And it's really I'm not really changing the angle like that. I'm just pulling kind of straight out just to lengthen it a little bit. And let's put it right here. This one here, I'm gonna pull this one out a little bit as well. And you can see, without changing the angle, you really can change how it is filled in there. Let me pull this out a little bit too. I'm going to bring this little guy up just a little bit. And then let's go over here to our stitch area and choose the fill. And you can see it shows the fill in here. This is my graphic images. There's a whole lot of ladybugs on here. So this is my objects panel here and this is where I'm working. I'm going to go down here into the properties and I'm going to change the color. I'm going to give it a nice little tan color like it was. How about the mink brown? I like the silky rayon colors, but you choose your own colors, which you like the best. All right, good. So we have this, and let's make it a little smaller and take a peek. It's starting and ending up here, and as you can see, the stitches this is the inclination of the stitches are going from side to side. I can change the inclination to up and down. But I see this little artifact line here and I don't love that. So I'm going to pull the stop down to the bottom and I'm just going to make this go straight across in attempt here of getting rid of the artifact line. Now sometimes when your objects are really small, that artifact line isn't really going to affect um, the stitching, but I find that when the objects are bigger, what happens is that you can actually see that line through there. So we're just going to work at getting rid of it when we can. Now let's take a look at these wings. We're going to do the details later, and that might have to be another video because I do like to keep mine short. So let's go ahead and grab our tool again over in the draw area to draw with points. I'm going to take this wing and I'm going to start inside the face because I want some overlap there. There's going to be some push and pull compensation that goes on and I want to make sure that wing's nicely tucked under there just a little bit. Now let's not worry about how that shape looks pretty funky right there. Um, again, I'm going to go right inside because we're going to work on making those shapes a little better. I'm going to hit enter. Okay, I'm going to close that shape. I could have just, instead of that last node, I could have just hit that close shape as well up here and get that closed. Now, if we look at this here, I can't just pull it out and I can't fix one side because then the other side messes up. So I'm going to make sure I click on my node. It's going to turn a different color. Mine turns blue. I'm not sure if it turns a different color with a PC. I'm using a Mac. 
and then I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to choose the cusp. And when I choose the cusp, I can look one side and the other side like that. I'm going to do that down here as well. I'm going to choose the cusp and I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. Now you can see all this overlap I'm working with and I don't want that much overlap because um, I want some but I want it to be as close as possible. I don't want it to be lumpy or bumpy. So I'm going to move this up just a smidgen and that's going to create a little overlap there but not too much. Now let's go ahead and click fill and let's see that it's over here in our optics panel. Come down to the color, click on it. I'm going to find a nice soft pink to put there. And there we have it. Now again, I can see an artifact line, what it looks like one. Um, I'm going to take this inclination and I'm going to go straight up and down like this. And to the artifact line change. Did you see it come over here now? I'm going to move the start over here and then I'm going to move the stop over here. And I find, see how if these two hook together, it would be like a cross. I find that when I make a crisscross between the inclination and the start and end line, if the, if the shape is not too complicated, it works really well to get rid of that artifact line. Now that we have this wing made, I want to show you why I don't use things like the, oops, see the little inclination right there still. I know that if I could change this a little bit, move a little bit, I can get rid of those. I think I might have one or, one or two little stitches there still. It's so easy to just play and manipulate and get rid of those. Okay, anyhow, I'm gonna show you why I don't use the magic wand. I, this much might, might be a good shape, it might backfire on me here, but if I click on here, hmm, yeah, I can change the sensitivity and see if I can get more. Yeah, even if, I'm gonna hit enter, even if it didn't take out these dots, what you might notice here is that first off, we don't wanna go around the antenna that way. We're gonna go all the way through here. This antenna is gonna lay on top. And there's just a mass of dots right here. Everywhere you see one of these little dots, every single place, and I have this blown up to 231%, you're going to have to have a needle dropping. Drop, 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 drop. And there's no reason for that many stitches there. That's when you get the little bird nest. If you ever bought a design that um, gave you a lot of bird nesting, in the bottom, it, there's a chance that it might have been auto-digitized. Okay, but what we can do here, which is interesting, is I'm gonna take this wing and I'm going to make a copy of it. Several ways to do it. I like to hold the Command key or the Control key if you're using APC, and then hit C. And then I hit the Command or the Control key and hit V. And now if you look over in the Objects panel, I have a second wing. Just bring this over and I'm going to play with it and then I believe it's flipped so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my little flip button play with it until I get it flipped the way I want it and I'm going to move this in place and if you remember again I want to have overlapped just a little bit and there we have the second wing. I also know that what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go from this wing here and I need to go to this wing here. Now, I like my designs to run smoothly when I have fill designs like this. So what I like to do is I know this is ending here. Um, I could see if I could end it here without disturbing the artifact line maybe just a little bit by moving this one up. I'm getting there, so I'm gonna play with this until I can do that and get rid of this little artifact line. But let me show you what I'm going to do afterwards.
because that might take me a few minutes. I'm going to take my start line, my start node, and put it here. I'm going to take my end one, and I'm going to bring it over here because I know this is going to need to change too so that I can get rid of that artifact. And then, hmm, I'm going to click on here because I want to start here. I'm going to click on Draw with Points, and I'm going to draw a line over here going to hit return and I'm going to assign just a single to it okay now what I'm creating is I'm creating a nice flow now we do know already that this head is going to be the last thing so let's move it to the bottom so what you can see is that you will not see that little line but what will happen is we'll start stitching we'll go to here and then we'll flow shoop, over to here and then we'll stitch this whole thing now because I did that, let's talk about stops and starts. Let's go here. In this one, what I want to have on my um, tie-offs is I want it to tie at the entry here. I want it to tie here and then it's going to stitch this whole thing, underlying all the stitches. It'll go here. I don't want this to tie off because I want this one this little single stitch to not tie at the entry exit. It's just going to go from here and it's going to keep going to here. And then on this final one, I don't need it to tie at the entry because it already tied over here. We haven't had a clip. So now it's going to do all of this and then I do want it to tie right there. That's going to give you a nice even flow without stops and cuts and clips and repositioning. It's going to be a nice flow for your embroidery design. I'm going to stop here and I'm going to continue on video two shortly and until then I hope this makes sense to you. If you have any questions please do take a look in the comment section and send me an email or uh, drop a comment and um, watch the next episode and we'll continue on with this cute little ladybug. Thanks for watching. <laughs>